My name is Dora Lara Gonzalez. Yes, I was born May 24th, 1954 here in Camel County. My mom is Maria Magdalena, her maiden name is Campos, and my dad is Agapito Lara. There was five of us, my oldest sister is Sylvia uh, Morales, uh, my sister Irma Lara, I was the middle child, uh, my youngest sister is Olga Lara, and my brother is Rene Lara. My husband is Luis Gonzalez. And he grew up right here um, uh, by the cemetery, he and his family. Okay. They were a large family, too, Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. So we got married. We've been married almost 36 years. Uh, we've got, um, I had two children from my previous marriage, Andrea and Isaac. And uh, he's, his son is Louis Jr. And then we have a son together, Adam. And uh, they all live locally except Adam. And mm -hmm. so we've got... Um, I don't know, I have to ask him all the time. Several grandchildren, and we have two great-grandchildren as well. Our oldest grandchild is uh, 28 or 29, and she's got two children, so our two great-grandchildren, so the youngest is two. We have a set of twins and uh, grandsons in between there, and it's a whole slew of kids. Aside from, um, you know, we found my grand great-grandfather, Jose, married. Uh, to my great grandmother Ramona, and that was Jose. What's his last name? Lara. Okay, and um, married here in 1900. So, like I said, that was our earliest documentation of the Laras being here. It appears that Ramona died early, uh, soon after maybe they were married, because she's in the 1900 census of Kamel mm -hmm. County. The following census in 1910, there's no mention of her, but him being a widow with some children. Oh, yeah. So I've looked for her gravesite everywhere I could think of because one census had them in Guadalupe County, but mm -hmm. I could never, I've never been able to find a death certificate of where she's buried. Mm -hmm. Nor, and I did find a death certificate on my great grandfather Jose, who died around here, I think they lived, uh, in, lived here in Kamal Town uh, when he died, but I have never, I've got his death certificate, but I've never been able to find his grave site. Hmm. So we don't know if it's one of those unidentified ones here in Hidalgo Cemetery, um, and that's something that I'm continuing to pursue as mm -hmm. part of the committee that's doing the research for the Hidalgo mm -hmm. Cemetery. That would be great to be able to find that. Uh, then my great my my own grandfather, also named Jose, was born here. Mm -hmm. Met my my grandmother Ma Manuela Castillo, born in San Marcos. So um, so most of my relatives, you know, my my dad and his siblings were part of the generation that they went they uh, made their living in Piscas. And, uh, and what does that Bisca, mean? They'd go out, they were migrant workers, okay. and they traveled around, and that's how they made their living. Eventually, they ended up in Colorado, where most of his brothers decided to stay there and live and raise their family, and to this day, they're still there. My, mm -hmm. my father, my tia Luisa, his sister, who's 92, and my aunt Dora, whom I'm named after, stayed here in New Braunfels and mm -hmm. married, lived, and raised their kids. And uh, My Aunt Dora died about two years ago. She was uh, one of the younger ones. Uh, but yeah, all my dad's siblings are still living in their, now my, not from 92 into their 70s. Long life. And long life. Mm -hmm. My dad has some great stories. He tells them a million times and I never get tired of listening to them because they, at 90 years old they always have a little different spin every time he tells them. Uh, he, my grandfather Joe had a brother named Paulino. Paulino married a lady named Sara. It was an interesting name because it's her first name and last name, mine, Sara. Yes. <laughs> they had a little two-room shack here on Liberty Street, not far from here, and that's where they lived. Um, back in the day, um, during Prohibition, Paulino made his 
living as a bootlegger. And my yes. dad, mm -hmm. and so this is this is Paulino, and, and this is his wife, um, Sara. According to my dad, he always had the latest cars, and he dressed to a T. And uh, he was a bootlegger, and uh, during Prohibition, so my dad tells stories about how he would sell his wares, always, uh, he and my grandfather, and they kept little tabs about who owed how much. Mm -hmm. And when the law kept, came in knocking, the kids knew what they needed to do. They had to run to the river and get rid of the evidence. <laughs> so um, I remember visiting Paulino and Sara, and as a little kid, um, always the smell of kerosene there, but I didn't know what that smell was. Very nice people, very cordial. They didn't have a lot, but what they had, they always offered you coffee, whatever they had in their little little home. Um, unfortunately, um, Paulino succumbed to some very serious injuries because of the kerosene. He, back in about February of 72, he went to purchase some kerosene for the furnace and they accidentally sold him gasoline. Mm -hmm. Um, so, of course, there was a big explosion. He wasn't killed immediately. He suffered severe burns and was taken to Bamsey, the burn unit there, where he died a, a week or so later. He's also buried here at Hidalgo, uh, right next to his wife, Clara. 